Hey everybody. I wanted to do a video on my 78 Grand Marquis today, September 2nd, 2023, because today marks 29 years that I've been, that I've had this car. I bought it 29 years ago today. So I've had this car like way more than half my lifetime. So I want to walk around it and talk to you guys a little bit about it. The first thing I want to do real quick is just show you guys how easy it is to take these fender skirts off to clean the wheels and tires because there's been a lot of discussion about fender skirts here lately because of Arch 58 Chevy that we took them off of. So on this car, it's real simple. There's just a lever back here that you push up with your thumb, pull it out, pull down, just like that, fender skirt comes off so you can scrub your wheels and tires. Then you just realign this pin right here. And there's a pin here and a pin here and you get this up behind the quarter, the lever. Just like that, take the lever and lock it back around behind it. And that's all there is to doing that. Pretty simple to Clean your wheels and tires that way. So, yeah, 29 years ago today, September 2nd, 1994, I bought this car down somewhere around Evansville, Indiana. And there's a there's a name on the ad. I've got the ad that I'll show you. It's 1978 two door Grand Marquis. When I bought it, you'll see in the pictures also. It didn't have the aluminum wheels and it didn't have the cornering lamps or the illuminated entry. I added quite a bit of stuff to the car that it didn't have. I came over here to my neighbors today because the locusts are so loud in my trees at home, you can't hear anything. So it's a pretty nice setting here anyway. But I polished it last night. It don't get out much, so it don't get polished a whole lot. It is all the original paint. It's got quite a few little bad spots here and there, but I don't see any reason to start painting on it because it still looks really good going down the road. Gets a lot of looks. I did find this emblem here, new old stock, years ago. I actually bought two of them because this red just gets all faded out and then the plastic just eventually falls completely out of the emblem and it's gone. So I've got this new old stock one plus another one in case anything ever happens to this one. I did have the windows all blacked out. It was the first thing that I did when I got it. A lot of people don't like it, but I just think it goes good with the black and plus it saves that red interior when it is outside. This interior would be pink if it set out very long because that's just the way red interior goes. It did have power windows and power door locks. Power windows were standard on the Grand Marquis. Power door locks were not, but this one did have them. This car did not have a power seat on either side. I added both of those. Um, it did have tilt and cruise. It did have rear window defrost and automatic temperature control. And it did not have the delayed windshield wipers. I added those as well. It did have the right hand mirror. So let's see, it's really power windows, I guess was about the only standard option in the Grand Marquis and the Marquis Brome. So, Normally, I'm the type of guy that if I can find it and the hole was there, I add it. So, like the illuminated entry, um, all the power window and door lock harnesses are wired for illuminated entry. It's plug and play. The worst part about it is, is you have to, when you take out the original key cylinder, you got to drill just this side to get this part to go in, the illuminated part. And I actually traced it off of another car that had it from the inside so I knew exactly where to do it and then I just touched up the paint and I found a new old stock set 
a lock set with the ignition lock cylinder and the, the two door lock cylinders. So that's new old stock. And another thing that people notice about this car is these quarter windows are functional in the 78. They, they weren't originally. It just bothered me that they didn't go down. And I was young. I mean, I was 26 years old when I bought this car. So there were still a lot of them in the junkyards. So I went to the junkyard and I took everything out of it. I believe it was a 74. It was a 73 or 74 to have this harness with the, all the buttons up here. And then it was plug and play to have the harness all the way to the back to add the switches back here. And I can show you guys. The funny thing, you guys that watch a lot of my YouTube and Adam's YouTube, I fix all of his power windows for him. And today when I went to roll that back window down over there, I'm hearing the gear kits are just spinning in it. So a lot of people's been asking for repair videos on how to fix that. Well, I guess now you're going to get one. So, but this one will still go down. There really wasn't a whole lot to it. I did have to drill the holes for the regulator, but it's the same glass. It was just fixed with a bracket. And when you take this panel off the back, it showed you they were still using the same cardboard where to show you would punch out for the the switch and it was a perforated square on the cardboard in the back of there. So I knew exactly where to put the switch. So that works just like it did in 73 and 74 and the earlier ones. Because a lot of people say, well, I didn't know 78. I see, I'm seeing extra switches. Well, no, it didn't originally have it, but now it does. And then later when I added the illuminated entry, See, illuminated entry didn't become available until 1977, and I took this door harness out of that 74 in the junkyard, so then when I added illuminated entry, I needed a harness that was wired for the illuminated entry, so I had to search, and I found one in a, in a station wagon that was wired for illuminated entry, so I had to swap out the door harness for a second time. So now it's got everything it needs. I don't, I don't want to put anything else on it. Um, it is the 400 C6. A lot of people complain about the 400s. I don't have a problem with it. If it had a 460, great, but it doesn't. So I'm not going to start trying to swap engines. I'm not drag racing people. This is the original ad that I found in the Southern Illinois Trader when I was working out at Brockway Plastics. I bought one every year, I mean every week, sorry. It came out weekly and I would buy one every week to take to work and read it. And this is what it was, uh, 1978, Mercury Grand Marquis, 68,000 actual miles, excellent condition, $2,650 or best offer. It was in Keensburg, Indiana. So I told a guy at work, I showed it to him, I said, I'm going to go buy this car if it's as good a condition as the guy says it is. He's like, you're going to pay $2,650 for a 78. You're out of your mind. Well, 29 years later, I still got it. And who's laughing now? And the old guy gave me this picture. See, it's got the wheel covers on it and no cornering lamps and no illuminated entry. And now, of course, the windows are black, too. But that's what it looked like when I got it right there. So I did add the options. And I'm not sorry that I did it. Air conditioner worked all those years up until just a few years ago it just it wasn't blowing cold anymore it still had r12 and i took it into the high school at the auto mechanic shop i know the teacher in there and he's well i had already put some dye in it the engine compartment's not spotless but let's see It was leaking right here at this fitting is where it showed up on the black light. And we put a new O-ring in it and he sucked it down and it was holding vacuum and it's been in there for over a year now and still blowing ice cold. 
I was going to show you as well. This is what they call media velour. It was a one year only material that they used for 78. It was the last year. And here's the dealer brochure that talks about it. Right here. Um, handsomely appointed grand marquee interior with seating and new all cloth media velour fabric. It is also available in dove gray, dark red, dark jade, camel, and saddle. The camel was a real light, almost like a yellow, like a cream color, and the saddle was brown. I think leather was standard in the Grand Marquis. I don't know if I want to say standard because I think that you could get either one. I mean, it was leather with a vinyl trim. Um, I just, I think that it was, you could get either one. I mean, this was a, this cloth was a no cost option. You could just opt out of the leather. I, th I think, I think leather was standard. Won't, don't quote me on that. Cause I don't see anywhere in here where it says it was actually standard. See, here's it showing a, a tilt column, but doesn't even have the cruise buttons on it. There's the aluminum wheels. There's leather seating in dove gray. There's the two-tone. I've got a two-tone cream and gold edition in the shed at home, but it needs a lot. And it's got the factory moonroof too. I've never showed you guys that car. Here's the brome with the different seating pattern. See, it shows it with power windows, but not power door locks. Here's the illuminated entry option. It's just the second year that it was available. Like I said, it, it became available in... 1977 and all the parts are they have 1977 Ford D7 AZ part numbers. You would have thought that it had been something that would have been you know appointed to the Lincoln, but it wasn't. It was all full size full size Ford part numbers. There's a wagon. There was just a wagon like this for sale on marketplace recently. Just that color and everything. I wish I would have bought it, but I didn't. So but I just wanted to show this car again since today is 29 years. Clock is still running, keeping perfect time. So I'll take you guys down the road here a little bit. And coming up before long, I guess, let's see this key still on, this window. See there, just like what Adam always has me fixed, <laughs> the gear... The pins went bad in here, the torque pins, and this motor's running, but the window's not moving. So we got to fix that. That's the first time in all these years I've had to do it. I've never repaired a front window in this car. Recently, you guys, if you go back on my channel, you can see where I fixed this door lock, which I thought was weird. I lost one subscriber over every door lock repair video. But anyway... I'll get this thing out of the yard here and we'll go down the road with the air on. It's pretty hot out here today. Uh, I'll give you a shot here of what's going on in Vandalia, Illinois. This is the Vandalia Lake. I live on the other side of the highway. But this is my neighbor Tina's place. She lives right where all the action is happening on the lake. Okay, let's go for a ride. Oh, one more thing before we go for a ride. I wanted to show you guys this original loan paper from when I bought this car. I found this a while back going through some files. And I borrowed the money for this car on September 1st, 1994. And the maturity date was February 25th, 1996. It was an 18-month loan at $169.19 a month at 10.5% interest. So we still aren't up, the interest rates still aren't up to where they were yet in 1994. In fact, I've been looking at F-150s and I called the bank the other day and I can still, on. A, I'm looking for like maybe a 2014 F-150 and I can still get it at 7% here locally. So we're still way below where we were in 1994 for used vehicles, but yeah, it says it was due the 
25th, but it's marked paid the 27th. I don't know why it was two days late. Maybe I sent a check in. I don't know, but that's when it was marked paid. So, yep, that's the original loan paper when I bought the car. So, I wanted to show you that. All right, let's go for a ride. Oh, and one more thing. We were talking about on Art's Pontiac in my last video how it had two switches here for like the dome light. And we were wondering what the second one was for. And a lot of people have commented that maybe it was for the automatic seat back releases. And I didn't realize that GM offered that. See, you can hear it clear as a bell in this one. See, that's locked when the doors close and you unlock it. It automatically releases the seat. You don't have to use this lever. So I'll push it with my boot. See, when the door's closed, then the seat's locked. So, maybe that is what it is in Art's car. I don't know. If it was mine, I'd probably take the kick panel off and follow it and see where it's going. But, I don't know. Alright, let's go for a ride. Alright, we're going to go this way this time, so we're not staring at the sun. Car does have dual glass packs on it, but it's still pretty dang quiet in the cabin because it's all out the back. Really opened it up and let it freeze good. Honestly, these 400s don't get the credit they deserve. They were really good engines and I mean, all the dirt track guys around here are looking for them because they're so good on the track. They're a really good engine to build. But they're drying up just like everything else. We can turn here and take a cruise through the Bandaya, Illinois campground and lake. Two years I did have a what we called the all the Midwest All Ford Nationals, and it turned. We had really good turnouts, but we just simply couldn't get any help. No one wanted to volunteer, and of course we couldn't pay anyone to do it so it only lasted two years but we did it right here at the campground it was a great place for a midwest big car show and swap meet but just like now you can't find anybody to do anything i don't even know if they would do it if we paid them a little bit looks like there's a lot of people out here on the lake in the boats today Hell, now we're facing the sun anyway. I only got an eighth of a tank of gas in this thing. And I'm not far from home. Today is my mom's birthday. That's so why I always remember this is when I went and got this car because I wasn't here on my mom's birthday. I was gone. Picking this thing up. Oh, there's a cop. I probably shouldn't be filming. Hold on. Yeah, didn't seem to bother him. Last big weekend of the summer. Quite a few people camping. Both years we had over a hundred cars turn out for the car show. This was a beautiful place to have one. Air conditioner's ice cold. It feels good in here. It's supposed to be 91 today and feel like, I think they said the feel like temp would be 95 with the humidity. So it's pretty warm.
And here's the beach, the Vandale Lake Beach. We had that one guy comment on Art's driveway being rocked. He was shocked that Art didn't have a... Oh, well, if you guys go back and look at my videos, um, Art over in Altamont, Illinois, we've been covering his collector vehicles and somebody commented on his driveway being rocked. They couldn't believe he had collector's cars and didn't have a concrete driveway. But I was explaining that everywhere you go out here in the Midwest like this, everything is rocked. I mean, these roads are oiled or what they call road tar or whatever, and then gone over them with gravel. So you just got to use your head and go slow. That's all you can do. All right, let me pause it a bit here till we get back out on the highway. Well, the cop's gone. See, they don't mess with vehicles this old. Well, really, in Illinois, you can pretty much get away with tinted windows anymore anyway. But I have over the years, I've been pulled over twice in this car for having tinted windows. And then I have to explain to the officers that tinted windows was... Let's see, the law came in effect in Illinois against tinted windows in 1981, but anything before that was grandfathered in. So I tell the officers, like, well, this car's grandfathered in. You can't give me a ticket. I mean, they're all ready to give me a ticket for having tinted windows. And then they go and they look in their little handy book, and then they find out that I'm right, and they can't give me a ticket. I believe it's still against the law in multiple states, but they don't enforce it around here anymore, even on newer cars. You can make a lot of money doing it if you want to do it for people, but I don't like doing it at all. I even actually took a friend of mine and we went up to Peoria, Illinois and took a, a whole one day course on window tinting thinking that we were going to go in business and make a bunch of money around here. And we both hated it so bad that we didn't want to do it at all. We're like, this sucks. We were wasting more than we were getting on. Then you go down to places like Florida, they got those window tinting places at flea markets and stuff. And man, them guys are just throwing it on there like it's nothing. So... You can get good at it and fast at it. We got chickens crossing the road here. I don't know how we don't see more chickens splattered on the highway here. They're everywhere. Well, we're going to get back in the sun, so... I'm going to wrap this up. I just wanted to do a video to recognize having this thing 29 years today so again i really appreciate you guys watching please hit that thumbs up and leave me a comment and subscribe to my channel i would really appreciate it especially if you want to see how to fix one of those rear quarter windows in a 73 74 even 71 72 mercury so thanks for watching